Thank you. Um, I'm uh, really honored by this uh, introduction. Uh, really, the, it's, uh, the work is the work of uh, Studio Liebeskind, led by Daniel Liebeskind, and named after him. And uh, I'm a partner in the studio, and I feel a great deal of responsibility for some of the project, including the Jewish Museum Berlin, where I was already involved at the time, uh, but uh, Daniel Liebeskind shouldn't go and mention here. So, um, oh, sorry. So uh, it's great to be, be here uh, in Finland, in, in Tampere especially. It's always good to come back, and I appreciate the opportunity to present some of our uh, work here. Language of places. We are deeply interested in what architecture can do to transform places, because we believe it can do that, not only transform them, but really create uh, places. And, uh, I'll give you short, some examples where we believe that we have really successfully transformed places or created them. Dublin, a location in the Docklands. The Docklands were once the largest in, in Europe, uh, but then by mid of the century, they had really deteriorated to, um, and, and were not longer active. And only in the beginning of this century, the uh, uh, Dublin Docklands Development Authority started redeveloping uh, the site, and our project was kind of this, took the central stage, so to speak, uh, in, in the whole development. Uh, the authority wanted a horizontal landmark, they called it, so a real landmark, but it couldn't be a tower. So it became a, uh, actually a theater, 2,100 seat theater, with a large plaza. In, uh, on the waterfront. You see it here. Uh, on the waterfront, the, the plaza itself really becomes a lobby for, for, the, for the theater. There's even a red carpet. It was designed by uh, our studio together with Martha Schwartz, landscape architects. And the red carpet leads to the entrance of, uh, the, of the theater, which uh, is, which forms a curtain, as you see here. It's like a glass curtain, and you enter through the folds of the curtain. And this curtain is actually formed by lar large steel frames, white uh, steel tubes, that uh, the vertical ones here, um, diagonal one here, uh, supports actually also the roof. So they form frames and then there's a diagonal bracing of profiles which carries the uh, curtain wall uh, with the glass. And uh, behind that is a vertical atrium uh, overlooked by five uh, lobbies, uh, by the five lobbies of the theater. And at night, the place really comes to life. The plaza becomes a stage uh, overlooked by the lobbies, and vice versa. From the plaza, you look up the lobbies, and uh, you see all the activity going on, all the people standing on, on, the, uh, on, <clears throat> on the balconies behind this uh, beautifully folded glass curtain. The place has been since uh, become incredibly successful, uh, known as the Dublin Docklands, so all the big uh, headquarters of Google, Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, they are all there in the area. Facebook is actually in uh, one of our buildings, I forgot to mention actually, it's not only a theater, but there's also 540,000 square meter of office space where this is embedded in, and uh, one, one of the buildings is occupied by Facebook, just to mention. But there are also uh, many apartments, uh, uh, restaurants, shops, a, a really successful area that was nothing before. So a real transformation. Another transformation happened here. Again, waterfront, again, uh, Docklands, the, the previous Keppel shipyards in Singapore, uh, a prime location that could be developed as an urban site for uh, residential development. Uh, you see here the towers. Um, 
and uh, some lower buildings. So in this place, we asked ourselves, what, what can we do here what, what, to, to make this place really different? And uh, we were faced with a urban massing with the, resulting from the zoning that would create in a wall of towers. And right behind is Mount Faber, a uh, famous lookout in, in Singapore. And uh, so the view from there would be completely blocked by, by these towers. And so we challenged uh, the zoning. We said, let's build higher, uh, let's build more slender, and let's group the buildings in a way that you can still look through, that there are view corridors, and at the same time create more open space. So we grouped the tower into pairs uh, of one lower, one higher tower, which is like connected by sky bridges, as you can see here. And uh, we presented this to the authorities, and they were actually approving it. They said, OK, we're OK with that you're building high. We, we like the scheme a lot. We think it will be very successful. And uh, so we went forth with it. Um, you see also a little bit, oh, OK, now we see it. <laughs> Uh, now we see the towers uh, growing like you know petals uh, of flower petals out of the green uh, of the, the lush green of that's typical for Singapore, and you see here the towers, uh, the groups of towers, and uh, you see the facades that have seemed to, and we called the project reflections because the, the towers themselves appear to reflect the water. Water that seemed to be uh, if reflections like you know like the sparkling of a water surface at least that's what we try to uh, 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 that's what we try to achieve uh, with the uh, with the facade and we see, we'll see a close up a little later here you can see the airiness of the scheme uh, really um, and the uh, free space that is achieved has a high quality there's a pool there's a clubhouse there's lush green but there's also uh, underground rain rainwater collection that's used for the landscape irrigation, and even the water of the swimming pools is, uh, is a, a natural water, there's a natural water filtration. So it's, there are also sustainable features that are uh, being uh, uh, made possible by the remassing of the scheme. So here, that kind of close-up of the tower facade, and you see that we used different kinds of glass, uh, opaque, uh, mirrored, translucent, and different uh, gray and white tones to uh, cre create that really rich pattern that bl uh, blends over the, uh, over the, the uh, levels. So you, you don't read the, the levels, you don't read balconies, mm, you read one uh, more, more or less uh, consistent uh, facade that, uh, that has a sculptural effect and kind of reduces the uh, impact of, of these rather high towers. Uh, scheme became incredibly successful, uh, one of the most, um, actually the most desired uh, residential location in Singapore. And so the client was happy and asked us to also design the next phase, which was mm, another 800 units right next to it here in the foreground. Me to some water in between. So then in Vilnius, um, in Lithuania, small project. Um, it's for um, a small museum for a collector of Lithuanian art, modern contemporary art. And so it's, he asked us to designed this museum for him, but we wanted to do more than that. We want to, wanted to contribute uh, to the city. It's in the midst of the old, or at the, actually the perimeter of the old city center. So we want to do something for the general public. And uh, so not only create a typical museum box, but create in a major way public space, public open space. So on the first look, it, it is a box. It's a white box, white container that fits into the context in terms of the massing the, this, and its scale. But then if you approach it, you see that the, uh, you see that the building opens up. There is a 
public, major public space passage like through the building. There are wide stairs that you can sit on. You can walk up the stairs. There's an upper plaza. And there again are stairs here seen. Um, from, the, from, from up there, you're looking back towards the museum, a dramatically canted glass facade that is actually the wall of the exhibition space behind. And you look into the museum, you can look out from the exhibition in, onto the plaza. And in addition to that, there's also a uh, sculpture garden right next to the museum. So plenty of public open space that can be used even without entering the, <coughs> the museum itself. At night, uh, the, the facades begin to glow, so the opaque box uh, on the one hand, on the other hand, the inner walls that are completely glazed, and at night they, they shine and uh, they are like a big showcase for the, uh, for the exhibition. So talking about facades, uh, we believe that architecture is a language that building can, can speak uh, about their place, where they are, about the history of the place, but also uh, about their program and about the times in, when, in which they were built. And the facades are, of course, the main instrument to do that. They are the public face of the building, uh, but not only that, they, only, they also frame and create the public space. An example of that is our museum in, in Dusseldorf, Germany. It's a central location in, in Dusseldorf, very important, but it was nothing but a tram stop before we got involved there. And uh, it's, uh, it's a big, uh, big um, uh, project for the city of Dusseldorf, not this building only, but the whole area got transformed by burying the tramways, uh, by burying the cars to create a large pedestrian area. But our project, again, was kind of the, in this case, a cornerstone at the end of the Königs, uh, Königsallee Boulevard, which is the main uh, shopping boulevard in Düsseldorf, and it forms the cornerstone towards the park, the Hofgarten, which is like the central park, uh, of Dusseldorf. We had pretty uh, rigid requirements from the city, so uh, we could not build higher than 26 meter. They wanted the building to fully integrate uh, into uh, the neighboring buildings, but also to kind of trace the historical boundaries of the city or contours. So we had to build exactly on the building line. So for a Liebeskind building, this is a rather rigid um, building. But then within that rigid envelope, we, we did a lot. So uh, what are the main themes here? The park, of course. So forming you know, the, the interface of the city with the park. And on the other hand, also framing the, the shopping, the public uh, area, which is the main shopping area of Dusseldorf. There was a place called Schadowplatz, which was ne really not, not a plaza at all, but just a, just a wedge where nothing really happened. So we enclosed that plaza, we created spaces that kind of um, oscillate, you know, that, that widen and narrow, and uh, we created a passage to the, to, the pl to the Hofgarten, which at the same time is open and contained, so we wanted to make that also a real experience. And it has become a real destination as a public space. Uh, people come here to sit on the stairs, to sit, to look into the Hofgarten, to uh, sit in one of the cafes or restaurants with this uh, beautiful facade as a backdrop. And seen from the Hofgarten, this was also important to us. What do you see from Hofgarten? You don't, just don't see any office building. You see this beautiful screen of stone and glass. But then on the other side, 
you get impression here of that space, what, what, it, what this uh, building in terms of massing and facade does to the public space. And by, by undulating this facade, we also created a special location for each shop. So uh, they are not all like lined up, but they have their special location. And uh, companies realize that. And there are some really prime, uh, prime, prime shops that, that have a pl that place here. There's an Apple store uh, you're seen right in the center. So they wanted to be of all places. They wanted to be in Dusseldorf, and they wanted to be here. It was not quite unproblematic, I have to say, working with them because they have very clear ideas what they want. So in this case, they, they said, OK, we have this beautiful idea. Uh, we want this tunnel. We want to cut through the building. And then on the other side, we see the Hof Garden. Isn't that great? <laughs> that sounds really great, but it's, you kind of destroy our building by doing that. Because what we want to do, we want to create a continuity of the facade. Uh, of this, this pattern of stone and glass. And if you do that, we all, we all lose. So they understood that. And uh, on, on one side, they got the, the, this, this double story uh, facade that they typically want. But on the other side, we ma managed to maintain the continuity of stone and glass. So both were happy in the end. And that it's a very successful shop. Well, I guess it, as all uh, Apple stores are. So then the passage towards the Hof Garden, um, you get a little bit of an impression here that it's not just a passage where you just walk through, but it's a space that's, that's shaped by these curved facades of the two buildings that are connected by a bridge that equally seems to grow out of the massing uh, of uh, one of the buildings. In the background, the Hof Garden again here with shops, cafes, and so on. So we had a multi-use program. We had, um, on the one side, we had two levels of retail and above four stories of offices. On the other side, we had four stories of a department store and two levels of offices. So a kind of very complex mix. But what we wanted to achieve is, again, one unified expression. We wanted completely flushed facades. And we don't, didn't want any reading of uh, floor levels or uh, any technical details. So very hard to achieve. Um, but um, how did we do this? So we worked with the unit unitized facade system, and that forced us to very rigidly um, modularize the, the facade. The facade consists of modules that are 1.35 meter wide in the, in the offices, but in the shops, they're 2.7 meters, so the double width, because the shops, they wanted the shop fronts as large as possible. But at the same time, we had to create the curvature of the building. So we kind of wrapped these modules around the facade, as you can see in this drawing here. And then these modules are filled with a rich variety of uh, either stone or glass panels. and uh, the facades, the requirements were quite different, of course, in, in our office as opposed to retail. In retail, they wanted great visibility. Ideally, they wanted to have single laminated glass, which was not possible with the energy codes, uh, even at the time. And <clears throat> so we have a, a typical IGUs in, in, in retail, but in the office, we have a double skin, a thin double skin with an outer laminated inner IGU, which, is, would, which also allowed us not, not only to uh, uh, improve the thermal performance of the building, but also like, to hide the solar shading and to deal with the complexity uh, of the geometry. So the inner, uh, the inner glazing is always flat, which is a great, great advantage. And only in some cases, the outer glass is curved. So you get an impression of the you know, rich variety, really, that we created uh, on the top row for the horizontal type facades, which is the side towards the uh, shopping area, and the vertical type facade, which is the uh, facade towards the Hof Garden. And here, the Hof Garden facade 
So it's this pattern that's offset at floor levels, but not only that, we created additional lines that run diagonally to the facade and as curved or straight lines. And we have the, uh, these cuts that pull the green of the Hof Garden into the building with the sculptural planters. And uh, so we, we needed to create some ventilation for the offices. So what you see, what you maybe see here, well, this point, it doesn't really work. But on the upper left, you see that little rectangle there. So we had parallel action stone vents that kind of open up parallel, but when they close, they visually completely disappear. So there, there's a lot of you know, small refinements in this facade uh, that, so it looks very simple. And uh, I heard that, I learned that expression yesterday, so deviously simple. And it's so, it, because it's really complicated, but it doesn't look, look it. So the, on the other side, the, these are actually two images. Uh, I don't get confused. On the left side, there is the curved facade uh, towards the shopping. And it, it's actually very complex. You see here a flat section, completely flat, uh, both in the office region and in, in the re on the retail. Then next to it, you see, uh, again, flat in the, in, on, on, in the offices, but below, the, because of a large radius, the facade begins to curve, and we kind of bend the glass. So it has flat, flat, flat sections, but an also a very narrow curve. And that took some con con convincing to the... Uh, to the retail tenants because there's, of course, kind of a, you know, a, a fraction of the, of the vision in that. Um, but it's, it's very, it's tolerable, it's actually very small. Uh, we also, um, uh, and then next to it is a completely curved section, very narrow uh, radius, and uh, also the glass of uh, the offices, the outer glass is, is curved then, and the glass of the retail is curved. So all these different types of, in, on a very narrow space, so it's, it's really complex. On the other side, uh, an old glass facade where we created the curve with large-scale louvers, which have various depths, and we created patterns by cutting into the depths of the louvers. The lobbies were also uh, interesting. Uh, we, we folded uh, glass surfaces from the floor to the wall into the ceiling, uh, working with glass from glass trash, tinted glass, and then we cut these uh, diagonal light lines into it. Uh, so the, the, the client really wanted spectacular office uh, lobbies, and they, I think we, we, we gave it to him. Uh, at least he was very happy with this idea, although it was not cheap, certainly. So in the evening, the, the facade, the stone of the facade begins to glow, and uh, the, the glass reflects the Hof Garden in the evening light, and then at night, it becomes all a jewel box that's reflected in the water. In Toulouse, we uh, had the opportunity to build actually the very first high-rise in the city. So the main feature of that building is a green glass ribbon helix that winds up the, through the building up the tower. And here, in the sketch by Daniel Liebeskind. You see that this uh, green ribbon actually originates from the ground, which is the Canal de Midi that winds through, this, through the city of Toulouse. It's, a green, uh, it's a, a green corridor through the city, and we made that a main theme of the building, so becoming that green ribbon. The building is located along uh, one of the main corridors leading to the city's old city center, and it's located as, at the Canal de Midi, as I said, and it's also the first um, pioneer for a large uh, urban development, pretty much like here, the project in Tempera, which I'm going to show you a little later. So we created a podium for the building, which was not actually not a requirement, but we said we needed the podium to integrate the building into its urban context. So along the allee, 
the boulevard, it picks up the scale of the context, and the tower is set back, but still marks prominently uh, the gateway into the city center. Two glass ribbons that, that follow the green create the envelope of the facade. And again, it's, it's very complex program. There is housing, there are offices, there's a hotel, retail, uh, facilities of the railway, services. And again, we want to create something that's unified, that looks like one bold sculpture. And we, create, we did this by creating these glass ribbons that um, also it's a slightly tilted two, by two to three degrees inward to make the building look more slender towards the top. Uh, the facades are flat, but they have, the corners are rounded, and which creates actually a quite inter interesting geometry. It's a great location in Toulouse. You, like the, the Pyrenee Mountains are only 100 kilo kilometers away, so you can really see them from the tower in, in good days. The green ribbon consists of green planters, deep planters, where you can actually grow pretty large plants, and they help, of course, to, sh to shield the, mm, the apartments against uh, the cold winter winds. They also provide some solar shading. They help with the cooling and fresh air for the apartments. And we created winter gardens that are in between the planters and the living room and then can be opened up towards the planters. Here's kind of a diagram of the building geometry. So these are the helical glass bands that wind up the tower. And the mullions are they're vertical mullions, of course. So what results there are Lausanne shapes uh, uni units. Uh, up here, the, here a catalog like of the of the unfolded facades, which are all quite different. Uh, and you have the different formats from rectangular to very extreme losanges uh, within one building. On the lower floor here, still close to rectangular. Uh, the, the, this is the hotel facade in the podium, for example. The units are three meter wide and, and uh, six meter, up to six meter high. This is kind of a maximum that was defined to keep the uh, whole scheme economical. And each uh, element is also framed with an aluminum frame that is partly perforated, that helps to get fresh air in, uh, it helps with the smoke. Um, uh, smoke ventilation, and, but also has a visual impact. We created wider frames on the bottom and narrow frames on the top, so that makes the building look lighter as, uh, you, uh, as you come up to the top. Here's a view of, uh, here's a section uh, of the hotel facade, so a narrow double skin that again helps to uh, hide the solar shading. Uh, the, the vents there are for uh, not only for ventilation, for, uh, for smoke extract, but also to clean the facade from there. Whereas on the upper floor, you have the more extreme losange shapes here, and you have a deep cavity with a catwalk. So from the catwalk, you can clean the facade, you can maintain the facade. And uh, it's interesting, uh, there was a requirement to create a fire barrier between the floors, which has to be 1.5 meter. So what we did, we folded that into the catwalk so to achieve full floor-to-ceiling glazing for the offices. Now approaching the complexity of, of the facade, we identified and quant quantified the three different uh, panel types that occur flat cylindrical, and the third type, which is actually cylindrical with a flat extension. And this is the relative percentage uh, of those types. And uh, each type was then further 
broken down. Uh, here we see the, the cylindrical with the flat extension. Again, seven types, uh, depending on the, on the radius, on the relative radius. And then we also looked at the mullions that occur here. And there are three types of mullions. Again, there's a straight, there is a, a cylindrical, and there is a double curve. And double curve, of course, that's tricky. That's really tricky. And if we come to challenges, uh, that's certainly one of them. Uh, of course, this is a house-made problem in a way. But given this form, this is really a problem that we had to face and to solve. And uh, so here's an analysis and, and first uh, attempts to, to solve the problem. So you have this profile that kind of travels up the cylinder and uh, similar as, as in a, um, as in a uh, staircase with, with the handrail, uh, you know, it, it kind of, it's a complex shape. You have probably have seen such a staircase. So it, it's, it's a very complex shape and uh, it's, it's not easy to solve. So, but we'll, we'll get to it there and I've just seen you have to speed up. Um, so it, it will be beautiful at night for sure. Um, Tempera, finally, uh, the project that brought us here in the first place. So building here not only the arena on top of the stairs, oh, of, the, of the railway line, an active rail, railway line, but we're also building uh, five towers and podium buildings, which are mainly residential, uh, with uh, all the ground floor as retail, though. So uh, we, we were aware that this, no matter what, would have a major impact on the city. So what we wanted to create is, is a real iconic project, uh, that a, a place that creates, creates something new for the city, uh, a new, almost a new city center. And it, it does a lot for the city. It bridges across the railway corridor, that which had uh, cut the city into two halves for the longest time. So uh, we're building the first uh, stage now. And uh, in the end, there's a larger vision also. The city of Tampere calls this the five-star city center. Uh, so the, uh, the, it was just published yesterday in the newspaper what is planned for the adjacent site. So once this is all completed, it will give the city a completely different uh, appearance. And here you can already guess, you, know, you can already feel the impact that the project will have on the city. This is still only our project, but there will be several towers in row with that on, on the decks uh, on the railway. And early on, we, we understood that this project had to be uh, iconic, it had to be a composition, not just a master plan of neutral office buildings. And here's the first stage with the arena and the first two towers and podiums. And the public space, again, very important. So this will be the place of the two ice hockey clubs of Tempera. And the ground floor will stay permanently open uh, so there are restaurants and shops that you can enter 24-7, but then also the public space. We wanted to create a space that is really attractive before and after the, uh, the game so, so people would, would stay on. And uh, here you see it. And it's a challenge because the scheme is very dense, so we had to make sure that there's enough and good quality pub public space in between is a view towards the arena. And this will be the north deck in the second stage that opens up with these wide stairs towards the city center. And again, provides a wide plaza uh, that is in, in the evening light, uh, is, is a, it will be a beautiful place to hang out and to visit a, a go to a restaurant or cafe. The facade of the arena, not a glass facade, but a, a quite interesting facade. So we wanted to treat to translate the dynamism of the sports in there into the facade. So we cre created these vortices that wrap the arena and intersect. And using different types of uh, uh, material and, uh, and, and metal, metal slats that have with different orientations and spacing. So here is a study of three different types. And also in terms of the materials, we wanted to create a 
a variety of, of materials, not only facade, but also matching then the material of the, of, uh, of the uh, residential buildings, which would be uh, clad in fiber cement board, the, the podiums, or in metal, uh, the towers. So we hope this will be a real Im impressive building here on the approach from the south, uh, greeting visitors with the towers in the back here. You see on the top, there's a, also a 300-room hotel, uh, the Lapland Hotels, which make the arena an even more you know, Im Im uh, impressive uh, volume. And uh, here view how it hovers over the active railway line with the towers in the back. View from the Tony Hotel, uh, finally. So we were involved in many projects that were challenging technically, and uh, in some cases also this led to some innovation. But I have to say, uh, we're not starting a project asking ourselves, so how can we up with the latest in innovation, technical innovation in the facade? It's more like they were driven by a, a formal rigor. Like uh, we're looking at the whole project. What do we want to achieve? with the whole project to create a memorable place. Thank you. <laughs>